Hey, I'm Kier, and this is that vlog thing that I'm doing. Last night, I made it out to uh, the final regular night of the Spooky Movie Film Festival. They had two movies uh, that, that were there. Uh, the first was They Look Like People, uh, which was kind of a psychological horror thing. Uh, and the second one was called German Angst, which was a trilogy of unconnected stories uh, that was definitely not something that would be to everyone's taste. Uh, I enjoyed both of them. Uh, they Each one had a uh, little short they put before it. Uh, the uh, shorts were okay. Uh, the second short, the one before German Angst, uh, was particularly fun. Uh, it was a little uh, short called Iris about a, uh, a hitman who had just killed someone and who was going up to dispose of the body and had his smartphone with him. Uh, the smartphone, which had a Siri-like app called Iris, which um, ended up being a whole lot like a good episode of The Twilight Zone. It was very well done. It was a lot of fun. Uh, the first feature, uh, They Look Like People, is a solid psychological horror uh, bit about a guy who thinks he's seeing demons around him and thinks he's being groomed for this big fight. And there's a good solid question throughout the movie about whether or not he's crazy or if that's actually what's going on. Uh, earlier in my reviews of the film festival, uh, you'll remember me saying that I really dig stuff like that, where there's a question about whether or not there's something supernatural actually going on. Uh, Luciferus did that, and it did it very well. This movie uh, also does it very well, and if you're into that sort of thing, I recommend it. The stuff that goes on in They Look Like People is uh, just disturbing enough and has just enough uh, realistic uh, humor and just general uh, silliness that you can see between two people who've been friends uh, for years going way back uh, and then these sort of things that they do when they get together uh, just to not focus on the stressful bits of their lives. So that was a lot of fun to see. It was very well played. Uh, I don't think it stayed quite dark enough at the end, but that's my personal opinion. Uh, it was played very well all the way through, so check that out if you have the chance. Then there was this German angst movie, which I really didn't have much of a clue about uh, going in. I'd read the little synopsis, and that was uh, enough to make me think that maybe this would be a movie that, that I'd at least uh, get something out of, uh, which, again, puts ahead of some other films in the festival. Uh, but in this case, it is most certainly a European film, and it is very definitely a European horror film. Uh, it manages to be disturbing on levels that most American films uh, can't quite manage without also being utterly and completely disgusting in every way possible. This is, this is something that I think only foreign horror has really been able to manage well uh, in, the, in the U.S. market, at least. I can't speak to how uh, U.S. movies are uh, feel when you're watching them as a non-American uh, or how a German movie feels when you're watching it as a German uh, because, well, I'm an American watching horror movies. So uh, all I can do is say that uh, compared to most American horror, European horror, and foreign horror in general, uh, tends to have a very different feel, which uh, I generally enjoy to some extent, uh, and sometimes more than others. Uh, the, uh, the Grudge movies are a prime example of what most people think of when they think of uh, Asian horror. Uh, very well done, very different culturally from uh, what we are used to. Uh, even still, now that there's been a whole lot of imports, mostly based on the success of movies like The Grudge. Uh, but if you compare the original version of The Grudge to the U.S. version of The Grudge, 
uh, you'll see a lot of differences, and, and a lot of differences in tone, and a lot of differences in feel, uh, not necessarily core differences uh, story-wise, but then again, you can also do a shot-for-shot -shot remake of Psycho and not get the same feel out of the movie as the original did. And a lot of that is based on what the creator can put into their own film. Uh, and very, very subtle things that you can spend a lifetime dissecting and still not catch all of. Uh, so foreign horror, uh, whether it's Asian horror or European horror, uh, there's just something that those directors and those creators capture that plays differently uh, to an American audience than most American horror does. Uh, and, and that doesn't necessarily hold true uh, for stuff in the continental U.S., because Canadian horror is very, very, very similar to American horror. Uh, when you get down to Mexico and Central and South America, that's when you start uh, getting more differentiation in, in this uh, hemisphere. Uh, but European horror is a very special creature. Uh, the, the German Impressionists, uh, the old uh, styles of, uh, that, that came about in film way back when film was still relatively new, uh, it carries through a whole lot. There's a lot of history uh, and style to draw from, hundreds and hundreds of years more than what we have in the U.S., and in Europe you're kind of soaking in it all the time, whether you pay attention to it or not. So that goes a lot into creating these undertones and these different stylistic touches, and German angst really hits on all of them. Uh, the first piece in the uh, in the trilogy of stories is kind of surreal as the narration really doesn't apply directly to what's going on visually, uh, and the tangential connection that there is just makes it all the more disturbing. Uh, I absolutely loved it. I'm not going to spoil the plot of, of it because you should go out and see it. That one is very well done. The second story, uh, I'm not incredibly enamored by, uh, but I was deeply disturbed by because of the way it played out. It kicks in with a bit of a fantasy feel, uh, and, and it twists that. It plays with your expectations for that, but it does it within a very uh, German context, a very uh, European context. It, it deals with uh, the history uh, of Germany a little bit. Uh, there, there's Nazis involved. Uh, there are neo-Nazis involved. There are uh, the problems that are expressed from immigration and, and all of the other things that, that hardcore nationalism uh, can get involved with. Uh, plus, you know, Stupid kids doing stupid stuff. Uh, it's, it's violent. It's very violent and brutal and uh, realistically so. It's uncomfortable to watch this violence being perpetrated in such a realistic way. And for the fact that it's a horror film, that works really, really well. And it leaves you with that sense of discomfort and that worry that there are actually people like this out there who could be doing stuff like that. Uh, and that is a hallmark of good human horror, uh, as opposed to any supernatural monsters or anything like that. In the third story, you start to get into your hints of supernatural monsters. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's just a bunch of crazy people. But it's a very sexually charged uh, piece, which adds a different level uh, of feel to it. It's got a definite sense of eroticism mixed with the horror, uh, and that's something that some people get very uncomfortable about. Uh, if it plays well, I really like it. Uh, Clive Barker does that sort of thing really well, mixes the sexual and sensual in with his horror. He does it in a much more overtly 
uh, bloody way than happened in this German angst uh, film. Uh, but in this third story, uh, you're dealing with someone who gets involved over their heads, uh, trying to be a good guy. Uh, and, and it does not go well for him or people around him. And the visuals get completely surreal at times, and that plays really, really well. Uh, the acting is relatively understated at times, and then completely uh, overblown into caricature at others. Uh, and that sort of dichotomy works really well. Uh, it's a disturbing story. It's a, uh, like I said, sexually charged story. So that's got some, some definite extra feel going on. And overall, uh, German Angst is a film that is most certainly not for everyone. Uh, it left me feeling really disturbed and kind of icky. Um, but that's kind of what I want in a really solid foreign horror film. Those are the feelings I want to leave the theater with, going, I'm not sure that I liked that, but a boy, am I feeling something. It's not something that I want to feel on a regular basis, but it's that depth of experience uh, that, as a horror fan of my type, uh, I really like to have. That's what I go to see horror movies for, is to be disturbed. So, German Angst, highly recommended if you enjoy European horror in general and don't mind feeling a little bit icky after you watch it. Uh, they Look Like People, also uh, recommended uh, if you like the psychological horror. Uh, it's a very well done piece. I'm not too keen on the end, but that's just me. Uh, again, very different from what you got in uh, German Angst. So, if you've seen either of those movies, leave me a comment down below. If you're a fan of European horror, let me know who your favorite director and what their fa and what your favorite movies are, uh, so I can check them out if I haven't seen them already. And uh, that's it for today. So if you like what you see here, uh, hit the like button down there. If you want to get notified every time I put one of these up, which is going to be daily for another 70 some odd days uh, at least, uh, subscribe down there and uh, be sure to turn on your email notifications so YouTube will send you a message right when one of these comes up. And uh, if you know other horror fans out there that may have an opinion on any of these movies or anything I've been talking about, uh, share this with them and uh, get them involved in this conversation. I'm very curious to hear what other people who've seen these movies have to say. So, I'm Kier. That's it for tonight. I guess I'll see you tomorrow.